Hey everybody, it's Uncle John from Your Story Hour, and I'm back to bring you another chapter from Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, and Still Mo by Sam Campbell. Today's chapter is chapter number 27, and it's entitled, A Supernut with Whiskers. The summer's hair was now turning gray. Grasses on the hillside had lost their green under the constant heat of August days. Birds had about finished their nesting, and feathered youths were undergoing thorough schooling from their parents. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and still mo, in their various home countries about the shores, were beginning an autumn industry. Chipmunks, blue jays, grackles, and red rings increased their interest in our feeding station. Salt and pepper had not been seen for a long time. It may be that they had wandered far, or possibly their summer laziness had developed to such a degree that they settled down in one spot without the energy to move. When Salt was last seen, he looked as if this might happen. Several times we saw little Urch. One wing still hung down a bit, but he flew well and we felt sure that he would be able to tag along when his family started its flight south. Duke was once more somewhere in the South Pacific. He had spent several days with his family as his leave came to a close and then headed back to service. We knew Duke's problem had been met. He was more than ready to go. He was anxious. I must go now, he said. And the quicker the better. Who knows? Maybe I can land right where the loot is. If I can find those little squints in the forest like the one up there, I ought to be able to find a big bum in a kimono. And we felt that if he did, we would hear echoes of the resulting cackle spasm wherever we were. A gift box arrived one day addressed, Mr. Stilmo Squint Red Squirrel, in care of the Campbells, Three Lakes, Wisconsin. The return address showed it came from Duke. We opened it eagerly with many a giggle and a guess as to what it contained. But all guesses were wrong. In it was a large, round object wrapped in tissue paper and tied with bright-colored ribbon, Christmas present style. There was even a gift card enclosed. It read, The stubby-tailed Stilmo. Roses are red, violets are blue, sweets to the sweets, and nuts to you. We unwrapped the ribbon and tissue paper to find a big coconut, a gift of doubtful value for a red squirrel. Jenny called Stilmo, and soon the little bright-eyed yet fellow came hopping from tree to tree and down to the ground near us. The coconut lay ominously on the ground. He took no notice of it at first, but came directly to our feet, looking up as if to ask what all the shouting was about. He could not understand why we stood there doing nothing about it. What was the big idea of calling him from his work if all we wanted to do was stand and stare at him? Jenny tossed a peanut to the ground right beside the coconut. When Stilmo raced over to pick it up, he spied this great big thing and looked that looked like a large bewhiskered supernut. He backed up to get a better look at it. He had never seen any like it before and probably doubted if anyone else had ever seen one either. Even the tall tales his parents may have told him about the size of nuts that grew when they were children couldn't equal this thing before him. He sat up and rubbed his face with his forepaws as if he couldn't believe his eyes. But when he looked again, there was the nut, and it was just as big as he was afraid it was. Maybe this was some kind of trick. Perhaps those low-down blue jays had rigged up a trap for him. He began advancing toward it with his typical caution, a step at a time, and chirping a challenge. Finally, his nose was up to it, and apparently the scent was to his liking. Fear left him. He put his front feet against it and tried to take a bite of the funny-looking thing. His jaws wouldn't spread wide enough to let his teeth get contact. He looked at it with puzzled expression and tried another bite. Still no luck. He scratched hard at it with his front feet, but not a dent could he make. In desperation, he jumped on top of it and tried again to bite into it. Then the coconut began to roll. Stilmo jumped for dear, dear life. This made the coconut roll back a little, and then it came right at him faster than ever. He hadn't seen anything like that since he was attacked by the milk bottle weeks ago. There was no time to think, for the big thing was coming toward him. Away he went at top speed. Unfortunately, Stilmo chose to run downhill, and the coconut fairly charged after him. For a moment, it seemed as if he might get run over, but he swerved to one side and disappeared under the shed. 
The coconut banged loudly against the boards as if eager to take one last wallop at him. And there it rested. A moment later, Stilmo stuck his little nose out to learn what conditions were, and he spied the whopper nut not three inches away. With a shriek, he vanished again and did not return until almost night time. When Jenny and I had recovered from our laughter, we took the nut, drained and drank its juice, and then broke it open with a hammer. Later, Stilmo was presented with some of the meat. But whether it or not it was to his liking, we'll never know, because he did not trust the nut after the way it had acted. At. It had acted. He refused to take even one bite. Possibly he thought food that goes chasing a fellow couldn't be very tasty. He sniffed at it, perhaps just to make sure the thing couldn't or wouldn't take after him again, but he wanted none of it. We wrote a letter to Duke telling him the gift had arrived and what a panic it had caused. Stilmo refused to add a postscript of gratitude. And that's the end of chapter 27. Come tomorrow and Aunt Nikki will bring you chapter number 28, which is entitled, Carry On. We'll see you then.